Here we are with Joey Vera, Hi. John Bush, Woo. Armored Saint fame. Yeah! They're in Montreal promoting their tour with Queensryche. That's right, metal. So guys, you've been yeah, doing this up, a brother? long time. You've known Queensryche for a long time. How did this come to come about, this tour? Uh, how did it come about? <laughs> who calls so, who? Hey, man, you guys want to go on the road? <laughs> it kind of works like that. I mean, we... Our, their agent called our agent and they said they were going out on the road and they were interested in taking us and we said love those guys let's do it pretty simple boom yeah and you had the punching the sky album were you able to tour for that or this is this is kind of where well, we're at we we did the wasp tour which uh we were supposed to do a second leg and that was coming up here, right to, here exactly. to canada playing montreal but uh unfortunately blackie had some uh, physical elements he had to deal with it was more pressing uh, so we had to cancel on that, which we're bummed because the uh, first leg was awesome, did great. Um, but uh, luckily, Queensryche was there, and we we just slid right on in. And you know, when I think of Armor Saint, I really think you know, Joey, you did stuff with Merciful Fate and Fate's Warning. Uh, was there any uh, talk of calling this Armored Fate at one point? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. No, but I mean. Uh, you Fate, know, Saint. Me, when they say Armored Saint, it's a brotherhood. That's what comes to mind when I hear Armored Saint. And you guys, no matter what the challenges have been over the decades now, you always rise to the top. And then look, you're again touring North America. So can you maybe elaborate on the relationship between everybody since the <coughs> 80s? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've known each other a long time. We grew up uh, together in the same neighborhood, same part of Los Angeles. And uh, we first met each other in grade school. John, myself, and Gonzo are in this, were the same age, so we were all, I think we met in the third grade, something right, th something around there. By the time we got to middle school, we had become tight friends and began hanging out on a regular basis. And then that's when all the shenanigans started. Got into a lot of trouble <laughs> together, and eventually started getting into music together. So we have a very long, the three of us have a very long history, and then Phil, obviously, is Gonzo's brother, is a year older than us, one or yeah. one and a half years, yeah. something like that. So he kind of came along in that relationship as well early on. Um, so that's when you refer to that. I mean, that's the lineage of you know we we are like a family. We've known each other a very long time. So that's that's why we're still able to continue, and I think that's a bond that we have. That's pretty strong and I think we're really proud of all that that bond and everything and legacy yeah it is it really yeah, is. yeah yeah five decades of friendship which is yeah. a long yeah. time yeah, yeah. most we're, bands can't even I don't even think the stones can say that because <laughs> yeah. they met I think in college yeah. or something yeah. 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 or maybe their friendship ended 30 years ago well, we don't know, right? that's yeah, yeah. that's possible yeah, but they're still going too yeah, man. it's yeah. unbelievable it's phenomenal yeah. yeah yeah at their age it's unbelievable really? do you foresee yourselves doing that at that age or well, I don't. Th I don't think too far in advance. Actually, at this point, we we did all just turn sixty, the three of us, because we're the same age. Actually, feels older, which is crazy, and he looks amazing. Um, you know, just a couple years younger. So uh, it's yeah. I don't really, personally. I don't really think beyond today. Like today is going to be a great show, sold out tonight. Yeah. It's going to be an awesome. The venue is beautiful. Uh, we love Montreal. We, you know, we came here with Metallica and Moss in nineteen eighty five. Had killer shows here. Um, it's a great city. And, um, you know, to, to think about singing Rain of Fire in 10 years is a little daunting for me. So let's just try to get through tonight. <laughs> well, speaking of that, I mean, uh, I ask all singers this. And Udo says he doesn't understand, but I'm not going to bring your voice to Udo at all. But, I mean, how do you keep that voice in shape? <laughs> I mean... Well, I'll just try to stay healthy as much as possible. I mean, that's the key ingredient for me. Um, you know, but you're on the road. You know, we're touring and the 10 people on a bus with Queen Strike, VIPs, you guys, you guys could be contaminating me right now. Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> we'll I'm keep joking. Our fingers crossed. But you know, you just try to stay as healthy as you can and really a lot of prep, a lot of prep work. And then the voice is strong, you get out here, try to stay healthy and uh, and just go kick ass. It's a, it's, a, it's a muscle. So it's like anything else. Actually, the more you use it, the stronger it becomes. And um, yeah. Just try to have fun and, and knock on wood, been singing pretty well, actually. <laughs> and, uh, you yes. know, Jim and I have been doing this for a while now, over a decade. And Jim likes to talk about 1985. I'd rather talk about what's happening in 2025. Mm. But some of the questions Jimmy had was, uh, you know, we interviewed Brian Slagle a couple of days ago to try to uh, promote this tour as well. 
he was talking about the accident you had, Joey, and, and how that might have paid uh, with Tommy Lee, and how that might have paid for the first album. Can you can you explain a little bit about that, or well, it was, that money went towards the first album, or well, but the it was earlier than that. It was um, in the spring of '82, so we hadn't even um, well, we hadn't done anything yet. We hadn't done any recording yet, so it was very early in the band's career, and. I was in a car accident with Tommy Lee, um, who we were. Fr I was friends with. Um, I was in a group with him before Armored Saint and everything. So once Armored Saint started playing, um, we did a gig, and Tommy came to the gig, and I went out partying with him, and woke up in the hospital the next day. So anyway, th through that, I got insurance money from the accident from the owner of the car, and so with some of that money. Um, six months later or so, I can't remember when, but um, we did a gig at um, the Troubadour and Slagle was there seeing us for the very first time and so he came up to us afterwards and said, um, I'm putting out this uh, second compilation, Metal Massacre 2, and um, I have a track one is open, uh, Merciful Fate was supposed to be on it, but for some reason didn't, hmm. wasn't able to provide the track for them in time. So more, he says, was more it, the coincidence. Well, yeah, that's, right? yeah, that's yeah. crazy circle there. Um, but uh, so if you guys can get a recording in time, you can have the first opening track. So we were like, well, okay. Well, so I just still had some of this money left from the, from the thing, and we met with uh, Bill Matoyer, the engineer, who worked with Brian a lot. And I think like a week later, we were in the studio recording what would become our first EP. But at the time, we just went in the studio and cut five songs. First song, the song we used was "Lesson Well Learned," and that's what ended up on Metal Massacre okay. Two. So from that, um, you know, th that was our first release. That and that's how that whole accident played into it. And then later, we released later, like six months later, in '83, we released a maxi single, which was three songs from that recording, and then. That's what Brian was saying. Why three songs? He's like, yes, everybody was doing three songs at that. that, that yeah, time. Was, and now they're probably doing it again. Yeah, in some weird yeah, way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, we were we were ahead of the curve. And and <laughs> has that first album been paid off finally, or are you still paying for that first album? Uh, there's so much <laughs> the EP. No, no, for March of the Saints. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? That's funny you say that because just recently, uh, Chrysalis. A lot of bands are doing this because after 35 years, you can. Can masters can can resort back to the bands or whatever? So um, they we kind of actually Joey the lawyer he <laughs> negotiated with the P, with the with the money guy who's now it's it's what is it BMG? Uh, BMG. Yeah, it's BMG now because all the labels consolidated yeah. and um, worked out a deal where they basically wrote off the debt for all three records because we were in debt oh, for all three wow. records about a half a million dollars. Yeah. And they were nice enough to say, okay, we're done with that. And so we now Metal Blade re-releases these records, yeah. license them, and um, and now we can make money on it, which is yeah. cool. Yeah, we package it and uh, the, yeah. whole, the whole nine yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. And um, you know, over the time, like I said, you've always had all these other projects, but you've always come back to Armored Saint. You know, what was the feeling of you know being the Brotherhood, and then then like John leaving to join Antax, and then maybe doing some other things? Was there any? Uh, animosity about that or back then or uh, it was all understood because you guys have been like you said known each other since you were knee high so no I don't I not I'm not from not from me personally there was never anything like that you know I mean life just unfolded as it as it did and you know we're I always had his back when he decided to go join anthrax and it wasn't an easy transition for everyone in the group I have to admit but for me it was I don't know it was just it it was a good time for it to happen, in, in especially in retrospect. So, for me, no. Yeah, and you know, you look, you had Q Prime, right? I think they were in the management at one point with you guys. Well, Q Prime was actually with us twice. Yeah. Ironically enough, they were with us in the beginning. As a matter of fact, when when we when Saint signed to Q Prime, it was actually before Metallica did. <laughs> so that's how old we were with Q Prime. Um, it was funny, and you know, one of the things, the jokes we always say is Cliff Bernstein, when the first time we met him, and we, he came to Joey's hat parents' house where we were living, where he was living. We met him, and first, one of the first things he said is, you're with Chrysalis, you signed a deal. And we're like, yes, and he's like, I hate Chrysalis. <laughs> and we're like, great. Okay. 
But um, <laughs> and then later we went back. It was kind of an offshoot. It was like uh, the umbrella of Q Prime, but it was uh, it was uh, it was uh, two other people who worked at the label, uh, Linda. Walker was her name? Uh, sounds about right. And uh, at the time, she was actually Lars's girlfriend. And then this guy named Tony DeChacho, who actually worked there for years. And they they worked with us um, during the Symbol run. Okay. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, I think everything that happened with Symbols, like everything that went into it with Dave dying, with you know, him being sick, writing these songs, it being a really amazing, just special album. And then this tour that followed that just didn't really kind of live up to it and you know a lot of frustration and, and just really not going through all that I think there was just a collective uh, exasperated feeling from everybody yeah. and um, so that's why the timing was almost like you said kind of almost perfect in a weird way obviously it was not easy for me either but um, yeah you know it to be with Q Prime twice and still not have success is a little bit like uh, <laughs> You know, but it, it happens, you know, and that's it's kind of Armored Saints story sometimes. I, we say that with a slight sense of humor, not always, but you know, it's like, what are you going to do? What are you yeah, going to do? Yeah, All yeah. this stuff never really had any kind of uh, ill effect on, on the impact of, of the music we made and the band that we are and the shows we perform. And we just keep trudging on. And it doesn't even matter. Like, you know, I'm not saying it's always been easy. But we just kind of say it's it's our it's our ball. We'll take it and run with it. Yep. Yeah. And, and you know, what what happened after you heard March of the Saints of production? Did you go back to Q Prime and said, "Oh, we understand now what you mean about Chrysalis." <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Brian, said, Brian was saying the, the, that, that that the production didn't even yeah. come close to what you guys sounded like. We didn't. Yeah, we right. were always a very raw, live yeah. kind of garage band, and then that was just too polished. Um, you know, that's what the label thought they should do. Michael James Jackson. Um, we weren't happy either, because we were like, this is not what we yeah. sound like. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, yeah. what are you going to do? I still love March. You know, I think if there's... If I look back and it, it just feels fine. I don't, you know, I don't look, oh, wow, we should try to remix that. Screw that. It was then. That's what happened. Yeah. yeah. So what's the, what's the demographic you're seeing at these shows? All guys losing their hair like myself, or is there a younger crowd showing up? <laughs> a little bit of both. You okay, know, it's been good. it's been refreshing actually to see uh, a lot of young people, which is great. You know, I mean, of course, there's the fans that have come with us, come up with us since day one. So they look a little older, <laughs> you know, like as us, we all do. as we all do. We're, we're we're all fighting for the seats in the balconies. Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> But, uh, but, you know, a lot of them are bringing their kids, and their kids are bringing their kids, so that's been... Well, now you're dating yourself. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, I, we said, we already said, we're in our, you know, entered our 60s now, so uh, I swear, there's, there's kids coming up that are like, you know, they're like 10, 12, you know, to the All Ages show, which aren't very <laughs> many, but, but at the All Ages show, some of these kids are that young, and they're with their parents' parents. It's crazy. So what, what can we expect for the set list tonight? I was well, supposed to make it. Would you like to, to <laughs> yeah, make it? We, we, we can make, we do it now. Our <laughs> tour manager is waiting for that as we speak. Okay. Uh, it's a mix of stuff. You know, we want, we're we still thinking that Punching the Sky is a new record for us. So we're, we want to play a few songs off of that. Of course, there's the classics that we kind of have to play. But then we have, uh, we have some slots in our set that we move around every night. It's really mostly for us, so we don't get bored, but also so that fans don't exactly know what to expect from us. Right, you know, right. they can see the set list FM and know exactly what the set is if you don't change it. But since we, so we take, there's a few slots during our set every day that we move in and out. Some deeper cuts that are Good. fun for us to play and fun for fans to hear. Fun for the fans as well. Yes, Absolutely. so it's, it's, it's a big mix of old and new okay and, and now is there a new album in the works yeah we started writing yeah we started writing we have about five to six songs done um, you know it's sounding cool it's sounding like uh, it's just more growth um, we kind of go a little slow we probably should have a little urgency just because you know our, our ambition is to get a record out next year and that will still be five years after the last one which seems to be <laughs> yeah, our pace yeah, yeah that seems to be your pace <laughs> our cycle. Yeah, it does. <laughs> five year um, cycle so we have to actually we have to have work hard to get it done by next year 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be cool. It's, uh, you know, there's always progression and growth with Armored Saint. You know, we never, we we know what the foundation of the sound of the band is, but we always are trying to expand on that and push ourselves and not do something that's just. I was talking to somebody about it yesterday, and it's like, you know, I don't, I don't want to. Sometimes I said this before, so I'll say it again. <laughs> you know, heavy metal as crazy as it is, and the imagery, and you know the counterculture that sometimes it is to me sometimes it can almost like be borderline conservative because people say well that's what they want so I'm gonna give them what yeah. they want it's like well that's safe to me it's like don't don't do that try to put a little edge in there and little twists just so fans aren't going like you know they get what they because then it sounds like 10 records that sound like themselves and the bottom line is give it or love it or not there's no way that you could say Armored Saint records sound the same. They just do not. They don't. So what, what would it sound different for, 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 compared to Punch in the Sky? Well, I mean, I don't want to put too much of an emphasis on it because it should be a natural, organic development. It shouldn't be like... Because once you start making this intended sound, then that's a problem. And you're getting methodical about it, yeah. and, then, and then it probably will backfire. I just think we kind of feel like the sky's the limit, and we could do anything we want. Yeah. And so, like, with that mentality, you know, Joey's, you know, he's the maestro and everyone contributes ideas, but he kind of puts it together like a puzzle and um, and it just kind of takes its own shape. When he's not negotiating record contracts. <laughs> I mean, this guy wears many hats and he's, and he's incredible at doing that. That's why my hair is all done. You know, a poor guy, he, we put, through, put him through a lot of stress. Hopefully he'll have some nice, you know, Canadian, <laughs> uh, or French wine like tonight. French wine, yeah. Yeah, uh, to kind of relieve yes. the anxiety that we put on him, but... Uh, <laughs> No, 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 guy. it's it's all good. And, you know, like, speaking of the music, you know, for us it's always a, a stamp or, a, or a, a snapshot as to where we are at that moment when that mu record was recorded or made or written. And each, like, maybe it's a good thing we have a five-year period in between because if we made it every single year, it would then it would start to blend into one another True. and they might all sound the same. Yeah, yeah. But each record we make is... I think also I agree with John that there's, you know, not vastly different, but they're different from each other. Not, no two records really have the same vibe or sound. Something about them is their own island. And so that is that's kind of like a subconscious goal for us is to have every record be like that. Talk about so, the single because that's different even more so. So we recorded a single um, in January and it's coming out this June, okay. June 12th on Metal Blade and it's a digital only single Okay. and it also has a video uh, that we shot for it and it's really cool we did a cover of a Four Tops song um, we're huge R&B fans and uh, we just thought it, again slightly outside of our comfort zone but things that I think we can handle and as a group we have the ability I think to straddle that line of heavy and funky and groovy at the same time so and John killed it with the vocals the, the track came out so good so we're stoked about, about that coming out and uh, I think it just shows another side of us that's maybe not so serious and we had a lot of fun making the video it came out really really cool we're so. looking sharp in it I want to I want to We'll leave it as a secret. Yeah, we yeah I'm already getting sharp. an image in my head. Yeah, it's cool. I worked for Little Caesar, right? I mean, I Wish It Would Rain and a Chain of Fools. Yeah, they did actually did good versions of those. Rob yeah. Young did yeah. kind of fit Great his voice, song. too. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, we're, so it, it's, we're really happy about that. So, what, was, like, five years before the record, how did the lyrics work? I mean, because what you might have written five years ago and when it's released, or what do you, do you write the lyrics just before uh, going in the studio, or um, when are it comes they relevant? To, what, no, I think they're always relevant. And I think the key is to try, my style, is, um, and it's really kind of developed over the years, is to try to like kind of keep things where it's slightly open ended, where it can kind of grow with the time. And you know, it's not look, I mean, there's been some great recordings and, and lyrics through the years from various artists that are of that time, and you automatically think of that year, that time, um, which is great. But for the most part, I think sometimes it's, it's, I always say that sometimes some of the songs they actually take shape with the time and actually sometimes the meanings can change so for me it's it's kind of funny because i find certain songs that i wrote i had a certain mindset and then all of a sudden five years ten years twenty years later it means something else and i'm like wow that's really cool <laughs> yeah and i didn't set that out it to came do that. all the way around to yeah. something else yeah. yeah so um you know i think it's just trying to be uh creative with with lyrics and writing um 
open, to, open to interpretation. Open to interpretation, trying to use different words. It's not easy. You know, I have a lot of songs, so yeah. trying to use different words, different meanings, different angles. Um, you know, I'm not the most well-read guy in the world, but a little bit, but enough to say, let's try to use different words. I mean, if I use a word and I go, then I use that, and I, you know, and it's done. I've, I've done it, but and I reuse it. But most of the time, I try to find a different word to have the same meaning. <laughs> it's a, it's cool. It's a little challenge, but actually, knock on wood, lyrics haven't been too much of a problem. That's actually still writer's block is not an issue with with lyrics or music. So. And, and what about the documentary? Is that uh, has it been released? Is it coming out? Uh, there's a talk of a documentary. We'll talk to the Mister Mister well, Hats here. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I purposely tried to stay out of that because I, you know, I don't need to add yeah, director yeah. of movie making <laughs> to my plate. Uh, this is not, I don't need. To, I don't need that. But uh, a, a movie was made uh, by a friend of ours who we've known a, a long time, who's been a fan of us for a very long time, Russell Charrington, he's from the UK. And he completed his, his vision, his movie. Um, he's still looking for uh, a home for it as, in terms of distribution. So um, I haven't heard, we haven't heard anything about where that's gonna be, but apparently it's getting very close. Yeah. Um, Obviously, the, the, the place for it is in streaming services, which is where most people watch things anyway. So, um, it, it did do, it was part of a circuit of the uh, film festivals last year. So, um, some things out of that have resulted in him getting closer to finding a home for it. So, I don't know. Hopefully, we know something in the next couple of months. And then, you know, with touring with Queens, like you said, you've known them forever. Uh, talking to another great vocalist and Todd and doing Amazing. a great job with the Jeffs of course a fantastic vocalist so what, yep. what's it like being with them and, and, and you know watching them do you watch their sets every night or uh, uh, a lot of the time yeah a lot of the yeah. time yeah I mean they're great band. they're just guys. super talented guys yep. um, you know Eddie and Michael OGs are you know they, they just treat us extremely nice Eddie's made like breakfast food for us like two to three different times and a dinner he's always saying I got food for you guys we're like what he's like in the bus making food for it's amazing for it's, it's really so incredible. it's so nice so nice um, so they treat us awesome we, yeah. do, we did a tour before I think Joey toured with them with uh, Fates Warning so yep. there's a lot of history there and yep. um, you know just just a great band and it's a great show like if you're a metal fan yeah. even a, a modern metal fan and you know of these two bands why would you not want to go see two bands that really you know, developed in the 80s and are still here. And I mean, Queensryche had a way more successful career than we did. Um, I mean, Empire and Mindcrime are two very, very successful albums. So, um, and they're playing The Warning, which is a killer album. Yeah, like, so, yeah. it's great. You know, people should be there. And if they're not, I don't know why. And, and again, you know, <laughs> We were looking forward to seeing you with Wasp. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. We had our tickets and we got our reimbursement. Yeah. But you know, yeah. this has been since it's been announced. It's been highlighted on the calendar, I'm sure, for many metal fans. You can tell about the people, amount of people just waiting outside this bus. So, yeah. um, again, we got more dates coming. You're doing oh, yeah. dates on your own as well. That's right. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about that. Here's your chance, and let's get some PR in there, and then let's get everybody out to see Ooh. you guys. Do you remember the the headline shows coming up? We uh, are doing headline shows coming up. Yeah. And we have a longer set, so we get to play whatever an hour fifteen. So we go even deeper in some of those sets. Um, I know we have uh, Leesburg coming up. Is that yeah. it? First headline coming yeah. up? Yeah. Uh, I think that's the fourth show that was our headlining show. Right. And we're doing some stuff in uh, Texas on right. a, with, oh, uh, wow. with Dangerous Toys, which would be oh, really cool. Wow. Yeah, they're doing a couple of shows with us. And, and uh, then we're playing L.A. show Yep. At the very end, the last show. We, we're doing about eight weeks. It was like, whoa, this is long. <laughs> this is long. Remember, we just turned 60. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My wife, I told her, I go, we're going on seven Funny. weeks. She goes, it's eight. eight. It's eight. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. You know, I travel for my business as well and my work life. and. You know, you watch the news and you think everybody's against each other, but when you travel, you're seeing that people are just like they've always been. 80, 90% of people are just friendly, nice people, and yeah. arguing and yeah. politics and all that really kind of don't play in anything. If, if you don't listen to the news, you'd think everything was going hunky-dory. So are you seeing that on your travels? Uh, well, hopefully. We'll see come November. <laughs> okay. I think America yeah, yeah. will be a real challenge come November. That, yeah, yeah we'll well, we happens. have our own set of issues there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I am a little concerned, actually. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll figure see. it out. We'll figure it out, yeah. I hope. 
Yeah. Hey, well, great talking to you guys. Again, looking forward to the show tonight. It's been highlighted on my calendar and many others, Great. and I can't wait to see it. And Thank uh, you very it'll much. It'll be my first experience seeing you guys. Oh, oh wow. wow. At Queensryche, I've seen a few guys, but like I said, I was wow. looking for that wasp wow. tour. Wow. I'm glad it came, you guys All came right. back. We better be this. good tonight, then. We better be good. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And we will be. So, there you Thank go with the metal voice, Joey Vera. Thank you. John Bush, the Armored Saint. And you've got to get out and see these guys. I'm sure it's going to be a great show with Queensryche.